Hello, I'm Mark Brunner, and this is a special broadcast from this passing day. I know that many of you will not be able to attend worship services this weekend, so we've decided here at this passing day to provide this special broadcast to, in some small way, help you and your family cope with the current coronavirus crisis in the United States. I'd like to share with you a message I presented in January of 2004. I believe that it's a message that resonates today with the current concerns we have about staying the course in the midst of a crisis. Be it therefore resolved. These words echo in my mind and remind me of the rich and great history God has bestowed upon this nation. There's not a founding or defining document from our rich history that doesn't contain these words somewhere within their texts. These four words tell more about the spirit and nature of this country than any other utterance or platitude assigned to our greatness as a nation. Be it therefore resolved. These words describe an attitude, a promise, and a hope in just Four short words, words that we ought to rely on even today as our nation faces another national crisis. When our founding fathers placed this statement at the end of the Constitution in 1787, they did so in a position of great weakness. There was so much that could and probably would go wrong with this infant nation, a dwarf entity in a world of powerful giants. England's shadow still loomed across the Atlantic. France, despite the revolutionary turmoil about to break out in its midst, still occupied vast stretches of land to the west and south. Spain also presented a territorial challenge on the Pacific side. It makes you reflect on the shadow of a virus so much bigger than any one of us that looms over us today. Amidst a world awash in material riches and military might, the young nation of the United States was indeed a minor player, one that could be dispensed with should it become a nuisance. Yet with these four words, a nation embarked upon a path of greatness. Benjamin Franklin remarked as the signers of our Constitution mounted their carriages and horses upon leaving the ratifying convention. There was not a head that was not held higher than before, nor a heart that was not lifted up. Despite the obvious threats to the success of this country, the the signers left that convention buoyed by these words, be it therefore resolved. With these words, the Englands, Frances, and Spains were transformed from looming threats to workable challenges. With these words, fear was transformed into hope, anxiety into promise, and uncertainty into commitment. Resolute in their faith in God, and that his favor would now rest upon their bold actions, the Franklins, Masons, Lees, Hamiltons, Jeffersons, and Washingtons, they didn't sneak out of town, they paraded out. When they put pen to paper and testimony to their resolve, Their faith caused a young and searching nation to be strong in its obvious weakness, to look forward to tomorrow and not aside at the trepidation of today. There was not a man among them who didn't know that tough years lay ahead for the United States. There were many issues, including slavery, states' rights, the power of the government, sovereignty, and territorial disputes among the states that were in no wise addressed by this Constitution, Yet each went back to his state with the genuine belief that through faith in God and hard work, all things would be worked out. They were resolute despite the situation, despite the odds and pressing threats that couldn't be ignored. Perhaps we would be wise to adopt their spirit amongst ourselves, even in this hour of threat. One thing is sure. If these men had not put their complete and total trust in the Lord, 
that he would personally secure this nation despite the threats, there would have been no constitution at all. The risk of failure was far too great to merit spending the time crafting such a bold and revolutionary document amidst such perilous times. But somehow these men knew that whatever the situation, the United States would come through with God's help, somehow. The risk of our failure as a nation today, as a people, as Christians, is no less perilous. The Lord is our strength and salvation. Yes, there are many things that might and probably will go wrong in the days and months to come. Of this we can be most certain. We too are small fry swinging in a, swimming in a, a sea of giant troubles. This is a worldwide crisis, bigger than just our country. But with trust in Almighty God, the God who alone is our strength, we can be therefore resolved that, in the end, all of our fears will be vanquished in the sure hope that our lives are in his hands. We can therefore stand head and shoulders above all turmoil, all grief, all fears, and any virus. We can be giants of faith because we have a giant God. We pray. Heavenly Father, may we be resolved to put our whole trust in your wisdom, grace, and guidance above all our fears. May we, each one of us, be resolute in our commitment to our faith, that we may never be afraid of the day, no matter what we behold, nor of the night, for what we cannot see. Guard and keep each one of us from disease that threatens us. As the world watches us, may we show them that we are resolved. We will trust in you, and we will prevail as a nation, and as your people. We are therefore resolved. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. From this passing day, I'm Mark Brunner. God bless you. For Jesus' sake. Amen.